Thanks. After the reasons for the British occupation of the Cape, we now look at how the British occupied the Cape. Reasons given, but now how? The process, the course of the British occupation of the Cape. Uh, we already had that one in the introduction, that they occupied the Cape two times. The first one being 1795 up to 1803, and the second being 1803 up to 1912. But then one wonders, which administration followed the second British, I mean the first British occupation? It is in the middle there between 1803 up to 1806 and that was known as the Batavian government or the Batavian administration. Uh, we are told that the, uh, the British occupation of the Cape involved three major ways. The first one was conquest, I mean two major ways. The first one was conquest or force using force to occupy to ensure that whoever is there is pushed out. The second one was diplomacy. Through dialoguing, talking with the party already there, those were the Dutch, to ensure that they move voluntarily. But this one was of course given me uh, a boost the diplomacy part of it was given a boost by the freeing of the Dutch king to, to, to England. And of course what was causing the, the freeing? The Dutch king fled after uh, the invasion of the French onto Holland. So when the French invaded Holland, the Dutch king fled to England. And what does that mean? After being given refuge, they now look at the modalities of ensuring that they convince the Dutch to vacate the Cape for them. But before that one could be done, the king himself requested the British that please go and help me safeguard my territory before it is taken over by another European rival. So that was a blessing in disguise. So it could have been uh, diplomacy, but of, of course given uh, another boost uh, of this uh, uh, very uh, miserable incident of the fleeing of the Dutch king to England. It arose from the French invasion of Holland of 1793. That's what I've just explained, that the British occupation of the Cape arose from the story of the king who had fled his country after being invaded by the French. So with the French invasion of Holland, that was in 1793, what did it mean? That the, the Dutch were left with no option, but only seek protection from the British if they were to survive. The British panicked. Why? After the French had the, invaded the, 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 the Dutch, the French panicked. Why? The panicking, of course, comes back to, it, also comes, it goes back to greed. The British were greedy. The British are greedy, why? Because they are looking at the French invading Holland, coming back to haunt them. How did it come, to, how would it come back to haunt them? Because it would mean that the French now would become very strong. Because they would now even come to dominate the, 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 the treasured sea route. This is what the treasured means. The most uh, liked so much. Everybody treasured it like jewel. Everybody was, could not be left out of the, of the Far East trade. So the sea route would now be exposed to the French. And what would that mean? The French now would take over uh, trade with India and beyond, which the British do not want. One, because of the greed and because of the need to have uh, dominance over uh, other European powers. 
The Dutch king fled to England. What happened when he fled to England? He requested the British to guard the camp. That he, me, the only way I can survive is by requesting you to help me. Do not stop here uh, after giving me refuge. That also go and safeguard my interests at the Cape Coast. So as the British are now coming to safeguard the Dutch interests at the Cape Coast, they also realize that why well, don't we take it over? After all, the man we are trying to safeguard is weak. So reaching there, they also take over and he gets a grip on the Cape Coast or the Cape. So the British uh, ended up taking the Cape without even safeguarding, not only safeguarding, but they came to take over. So the Dutch king was left with no option but to accept because of the might of the British. Amidst all this confusion, there is a confusion here where the king is requesting the British to safeguard the cap for them that protect it on my behalf. There is now another confusion. What was that confusion? The Dutch East Indies company collapsed. And of course, with the collapse of the Deco, it was a very big blow. It was a very, in fact, it was, it was a final blow to the Dutch stay at the Cape. They could not hold on. They could not hold on at the Cape. So the best was to give way. The same thing applies to all these companies that worked elsewhere in East Africa, in West Africa. All those companies, the moment they collapsed, the future of the respective home country, as far as control was concerned, was at risk. Was at risk. That's the same thing here. Collapse of the Deco, giving a final blow to the Dutch, holding on to the Cape Coast. Then in 1802, France and Britain signed the treaty. They signed the treaty, and that treaty was known as the Treaty of what? Of Amiens. You can see. The two rivals, these, the British and the, the French were now European rivals. But because of, of hidden interests and because of commercial considerations, these two rival powers had to come to table. They had to come for peace talks. Because they realized that the best way was to talk. The French were aware of the British strengths. The same thing applies to the British. They were also aware of the strengths of the what? Of the, of the French. So there was, there was need for them to now talk. There was need for them to talk. And the talking to ensure peace prevails between the two. And that's why they had to sign the what? The Peace Treaty of Amiens. And the, what was in the terms of the Peace Treaty? By the terms of the, of the treaty, the, the, the British were to withdraw from the Cape. Now as they withdraw from the Cape, they are leaving it to who? The French are not yet coming here. As the Brits are, are withdrawing from the Cape, the French also leave Holland. Because Holland has been invaded by the French and they want peace to go back and, and occupy the Cape. The British have requested the, the French to leave Holland in exchange for them leaving the what? The Cape. It was like the French are leaving Holland so that they can come to occupy the what? The Cape, which the British had withdrawn from. But that one did not happen. In fact, this one came to the second Dutch occupation of 1803, which was the Batavian. Because they were now safer from the French, they now have to come and control their, what? their colonial possession, that was the Cape. And that one was uh, followed by Napoleon's invasion of Prussia. Napoleon's invasion of Prussia, or call it Germany, brought a new, a new confusion. As if 
the wars had been given a hold, they now resume. After the resumption of the, of the Napoleonic Wars, Holland again had to come and occupy the Cape. Because now they knew that the, the invasion of Prussia was not going to stop there. It would even spill over to other areas. That's why the Batavians came and occupied the Cape. Meaning this was the second Dutch what? Occupation. And of course, the, 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 the second occupation was in the, in, in, the, in the interest of the Dutch and at the expense of the French and even the British themselves. Why? Because the British now got threatened that now our stay at the Cape in South Africa is in total jeopardy. It is in total what? Jeopardy. That it is now risking being taken over by the, the Dutch again. Meaning they regulated. The British now regulated why they had given refuge to the Dutch king. And that, that was William. Why did they give him that protection? They knew that this one would be in exchange of uh, taking over the Cape Coast. The above therefore gave a blow to the Treaty of Amiens. In other words, what had been signed between the French and the English was now null. Why? Because the, the Dutch are coming to take over their thing once again. And the French now and the British had, were like they had signed the Treaty of Amiens uh, just as, uh, as uh, just a mere, it was just a mere writing and not being followed. Mm? It was just a treaty made out of, uh, signed without considering what would happen later. So the violation of their treaty meant that the Dutch were now in total control of the Cape. In 1906, the British again occupied the Cape. Why? They realized that the Batavians were not so strong to continue administering the, what? the Cape. And they were like, we have to ensure that we safeguard our interests. And we, which interests are those? I told you already, greed for trade with the Far East. So they forcefully came and reoccupied the Cape. And that's why I told you that the Batavian admin was a very brief one. 1803 to 1806, they had already been removed by the British. And that one marked the second British what? occupation. Therefore, as the British are now kicking out the Dutch, they now have to ensure that they have a firm grip. The Dutch under the Batavian, which were liberals, had been kicked out. And that one opened the way, opened the way for the British which pie again. And that's when they gave uh, the whole uh, task to a man known as General Bayard. General Bayard had been appointed to ensure that he, he carries out this imperial conquest once again. And he, it was done uh, militarily to ensure that no European rival now comes to threaten the what? The British. And they gave him 60 ships. He was given 60 ships. Uh, that was a fleet uh, with enough soldiers, uh, the navy, to come and occupy the cave. And that was the second occupation. But however, even with the second British occupation, it was uh, going to be injustice of the highest order. Injustice on who? Injustice on the Dutch. Uh, why do we say injustice, injustice on the Dutch? Because these were the original owners. Uh, original owners removed by the British in 1795. They come back in 1803. They are now removed again by the same people. Now, the British now had to consider uh, giving some compensation to the Dutch. And that compensation came in form of uh, that compensation came in form of in form of uh, uh, financial. And that's why they gave them uh, a whooping compensation of seven hundred thousand pounds. Uh, for that the Dutch can now uh, forget 
about uh, ever coming back. Uh, it was like how the East African coast was uh, taken over by the Germans and the, uh, the, the, the British compensating the Sultan, who was the original owner. So the British are now compensating the Dutch with uh, close to 700,000 pounds, and now the Dutch finally gave, uh, they gave up on the colony. And since then, the British made it their own, and they turned it into a British protectorate of the Cape. So that's how uh, the occupation process of the Cape was done by the British from 1795 up to uh, 1912.